Anyway. You know, I haven't seen our players since we got back, yeah, but we were, you know, guys were tired getting off the bus yesterday after the quick turnaround. That was a quick trip, and uh, obviously we're turning around again quick here today. So, um, yeah, it was a great win. I mean, I was, it was an unbelievably jubilant uh, locker room, as you could imagine. Um, and, uh, you know, just really excited for our team, for our players. Um, we're really happy about, obviously, uh, advancing and having another great opportunity to play against a really good program and team in, in uh, Louisville. What do you mean by this team is quite better away from the hump in the second half of the year? I think just maturing, you know, growing as a team, improving. Did South Carolina win or did they win? Well, I mean, that was the first road win. And, uh, but, you know, we, we've had some other games we played well on the road and not won. Uh, so I think you know we're 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 improving and and uh, developing as a team. That's been good. You know, I think it was you know something that everybody picked up on, but I had no specific conversation with him. No about that. It was just you know disappointing that our whole team could only have one. You know, in, in honesty and fairness to him, we, he had a couple of good passes where guys didn't make shots, I mean, including with four seconds to go, a wide open three to win the game. Uh, but there were other shots, you know, off of out of bounds plays. And so, you know, we, we took good shots uh, for the most part and shot it really well in the first half. You know, I was disappointed in how the second half we allowed them to come back and take the lead after having a 20 point lead. And that's not all positive, but. We got hurt on the glass, and we've got to do a better job uh, against a very good rebounding uh, team in Louisville, uh, keep them off the offensive rebound. We're doing a good job defending the first shot, but then they're getting too many second shots and second shots for putbacks. And Baylor's good. You know, I mean, um, you know, Maston was a very good player, and he really took it to us, especially in the second half yesterday, and he's a great player. I mean, you know, they had four seniors that scored, you know, 68 points, guys that you know were playing in their last game and trying to make sure it wasn't going to be their last game. Well, they're very good. I mean, you look at them. First of all, uh, Adele is a really good player, 22, very versatile. Uh, their leading scorer, uh, you know, he can shoot it. He's very good uh, off the dribble at beating you. Uh, has great length and athleticism. And he's an outstanding passer. He really passes the ball well. Does a really nice job uh, penetrating and then dumping off to their bigs or, or lobbing it to them. And he's a very good passer. Spalding is a very difficult matchup because he's 6'10", but he can step out and play away from the basket. He scores around the basket. He's got great length. He's long, um, very good in the low post. So he'll be a matchup uh, issue. He's a good player. Uh, you know, I think King is an outstanding guard. Uh, at 6'6", six, six, you know, he's a matchup issue because he plays the off guard a lot. He'll play some small forward. And then Snyder shooting 46, 48 percent from three. And they have this kid McMahon who had four threes against Middle Tennessee yesterday who's a very good shooter. So, uh, you know, they've got really good personnel. Mahmoud is the leading shot blocker in the ACC. And he didn't even start yesterday. You know, they played smaller with Sutton at the four, number 24. So they've got a number of players. Perry is explosive coming off the bench at, in the backcourt. Really good uh, wing point guard, backup point. I mean, you know, they've got guys. <clears throat> no, I mean, you know, we've had plenty of good shot blocking teams in this league too. Uh, you know, speaking of Texas A&M, who had a great win yesterday and has advanced to the Sweet 16. So, yeah, I mean, you know, our – one thing about playing in the SEC, it prepares you for anything else you're going to see in uh, other opponents because uh, our, our league is proving out to be what, you know, I've said it was all year. It's the best league in the country, top to bottom. I did. I thought that they were really making an effort to try to re, uh, you know, fortify men's basketball. And, you know, with some of the hires they made, starting with, you know, you know the commissioner who's a basketball guy, I mean, you know, he was a basketball coach uh, in upstate New York, and you know, he hired Mike Tringhese, who I you know, makes one of the top people in the history of college basketball. 
in, in understanding. And Mike went out and hired Dan Leibowitz and, you know, Mark Whitehead. And so there's been a, a, a much greater emphasis. And, you know, the, the league, you know, continue. Like, you look at our league as it's hired a couple of new coaches. I mean, this league, I mean, it doesn't get any better coached than this league anywhere in the country. So, I mean, there's a great emphasis. And it's exciting because you're going to see, I don't think just this year is going to be a, a one – time deal where you're going to have eight teams coming out of this league. I think that's going to be something that will be uh, looked upon as being, you know, um, pretty normal here in the fu- in the, the near future. What do you mean by this year? Just the recent hires, Cardozo and Smith, you don't think? Yeah, both good hires. Well, especially with what they've had with the upper option state, more flexibility, especially with the young young team group too. Yeah, I can't speak to that, but I just know they're both very good coaches. Yeah, yeah, I wish there was an extra day in between. You know, it's always better to have more time to prepare. Uh, you know, I, I, I was in the Pac-10 and then Pac-12 for 10 years. Was this how you always did it? You always played Thursday and then your Saturday afternoon or Saturday evening. Uh, you know, so I've seen the difference, and, and you much prefer to have more time between each game. But it is what it is, you know. So they have the same thing. They uh, – Differences, they get to play at home, and there'll be a great crowd there. They have incredible support uh, at Louisville for their basketball program, and uh, this will be a true road game. Yeah, I thought Tyson played really well yesterday. And, uh, you know, Lamar made two big plays down uh, the, the end of that game. One was the pass that uh, was set up to, to go opposite uh, and it worked uh, beautifully where he did a great job finding him uh, in the, the opposite corner. And then the last play well, it was really exciting because uh, he made the right read again and didn't panic and didn't get hurried. You know, we had 5.1 seconds, I think it was. And he found Q right in a rhythm, and, and he got off a good look. And, uh, you know, thankfully we got the shooter's touch. Good backspin. It's, you know, it is what it is, you know. There's nothing we can do about that. I mean, we just deal with it, so it's fine. I thought Nick uh, played very well for a guy who hadn't done anything full court in nine days. Uh, you know, he played 24 minutes. He got in foul trouble. You know, he got his third foul early in the second half, which impacted our defense significantly. Uh, I thought he came out and started us off. He hit the first two shots and, you know, looked like, hey, this guy's been out. I mean, no one would have known it if you're watching that game. And, and I think he'll he, – you know, sometimes when, you, when you're out for nine days and you're out because you fell on your hip, I think he'll be much more comfortable tomorrow uh, because he has this one under his belt from yesterday. And I was telling him after the game that uh, after Q made that shot and he wasn't in, it was uh, Tyson that was in there who had just made the three – as soon as Q made it, if you go watch the film, you know, right away those two connect and they do a chest bump in the air. And I'm telling you, Nick, after he did that, he jumped up again. I'm telling you, he must have been about three feet in the air. I mean, uh, so I think he's okay. Because if you go watch that, you're going to see him. I mean, he was flying. Uh, I said, Nick, you're obviously okay. You should have seen how you jumped. It's on film. You can see it. It was pretty fun to watch everybody uh, enjoying that. Uh, you know, when I replayed the uh, the shot that Q made. And, you know, uh, to that, I mean, I can't remember another player that I've coached either as an assistant or as a head coach uh, in college make more than one buzzer beater in a career. This guy's had three this year and four for a career at the buzzer. That's like, it's amazing, absolutely amazing. How bright is the I have no answer. He's a good player. You know, the day before we went down, he practiced some for about 40 minutes and looked very comfortable out there. It was all offense and, uh, you know, getting him used to attacking that zone. And uh, part of it was Lamar wasn't practicing. You know, he, he had a, you know, the high ankle sprain is what we think it is. And so, uh, 
you know, it was helpful to have him in there, number one, to be able to have the practice, and number two, for him to get some confidence and say, hey, yeah, I can do this. And, uh, so that, that w we, uh, I think, knew going into the game after practice uh, the day before the game that, you know, he'd get a chance to play some. Was it a design to get him those shots early? Or was that no. Just it just, you know, he, you know, happened. Yeah, he did a good job, but we had to have it earlier too when we weren't guarding number 31 and he was scoring every time. So you always have to have it. Yeah, it's tough because uh, the tech was a, a, a turning point that went against us. That was a momentum changer that we didn't need. And, uh, you know, so that was a tough break. And, and pick up your fourth foul, now he limits his opportunity to play. So it's just not, uh, you know, you, you, you'd hope by now he'd be learning from those mistakes. How do you get him to not do those mistakes? Well, it's March, what is it today? We keep trying. <laughs> we keep trying. Okay, thank you.